Allies, buddies, amigos, companions, partners, cohorts, that one guy that just shows up to things. Whatever they are, it's important to have friends. Or at least to give the little resin army men some. I want to talk about allies in the one page rules system. For those who don't know, I've been painting up a Ratmen skirmish force throughout the release schedule for them. And instead of color scheme videos like normal, I've been doing more hobby related things like a painting journal, how to protect your models, bases, dealing with burnout, and taking better pictures of your miniatures. Since this is the last month to complete the full roster of Noble Rats, it can feel like a bit of an end of sorts. With the release of the Great Death Roller, the many varieties of Blessed Platform, the Storm Ogres, Militia, and Sidekicks, that means that everything the rats have is now available. But what if I want more? When it comes to sci-fi and fantasy settings, I like a lot of diversity. I'm not usually a fan of just this race or species versus that one. You know, like some other major tabletop game settings. And while OPR does copy that force organization to an extent, their no good guys and no bad guys policy to the lore means that the battles on the tabletop can be more about this motivation versus that motivation which is why the rules for allies in OPR games are generally very open and accessible. In Age of Fantasy, it wouldn't be all that strange to see unlikely pairings if you can have their motivations cross. More technically inclined Ratmen partnering with Vinci inventors who were impressed with each other's engineering. The possibilities are only limited to the motivations your imagination can come up with. And with the new Army Creation Studio, anything outside of the established forces can be included easily as well. Though just remember the onus is on you to keep things fun and balanced. And it's still currently in a form of beta, but available for everyone in the OPR Patreon to use. Not only does OPR have allies on the tabletop, but also in the industry as a whole. Through the OPR compatible program, Many creators have been able to provide options of STLs for OPR armies with or without dedicated STLs yet. Or in the case of Dragon Trapper's Lodge, full armies, completely unlike some of the more established ones. A force of dragons and kobolds, a farmyard themed menagerie, a whole force of ooze beings from large to small, and forget sea elves, instead a whole host of sea creatures. Currently, their Patreon includes a force of jungle apes and gorillas, who I can see easily fitting in with the Saurians, or maybe butting heads with them often. Each of those armies comes included with rules to be able to play them in OPR games, and lore to explain their presence. So getting back to the idea of allies, my Ratmen have more choices for friends and enemies than ever, with only more to come. Which brings me to the point of the rest of this video. While it'd be easy enough to just paint a separate force and include them when I want them to be friends, I really like the idea of having established allies, to the point where that they look like they are unified, on the tabletop as well. So how can I take my Ratmen color scheme and transfer it to their allies to make them appear as one cohesive force? Over the months, I've ended up with a pretty diverse Ratmen force. Diverse in the sense that I have some sneaky units, martial units, tech units, and religious units. And this month, I'll be adding another big guy in the form of a Storm Ogre with Gatling Guns, a real powerhouse of muscle and gun. A one rat horde, if you will. But what none of them have is wings. So for my ally, I'm picking a Wormblood Elite from Dragon Trapper's Lodge's Children of the Flame. I'm going to justify him as an emissary of the Dragon Lords looking for allies in their fight against the Demon Dragon. So that's going to be my reason for his presence. 
Since I already have the color scheme I'm going to use for the rats, the trick is going to be how I transfer that scheme over to the worm blood so that they feel cohesive but still a little separate. When it comes to some things, there's not much I actually have to think about. Metal and leather just need to look like metal and leather. For my ratmen, I've been painting their clothing in a dark, desaturated green. Most of the time, this is usually just their pants that you don't really get to see much of. Either it's covered up a bit by padding and knee guards or cloth wraps, which I have as a different color. These rat ogres are pretty big though, so they've got some bigger pants to fill. For the worm blood, he's decked out in a lot of armor, so there's not much sticking out, but he's got the same under armor sticking out around his legs. So that is a perfect one-to-one -one exchange. It's just that the worm blood will have less showing at the end. Anything with leather straps and the belt are going to be one of the simple copy pastes. They're mostly used to keep the armor on and the bags held up for both of them. So while it would be possible to give them different tones or hues, just keeping them the same works well for my intentions. Metal is going to be staying the same as well. I have a pretty deeply contrasted non-metal metal I'm using on the rats, which on the Storm Ogre is mostly just going to accent things around him, shoulder plates and mechanical things on his war gear. But on the Wormblood, because he's covered in so much plate, this is going to be the bulk of his scheme. So he's more like a Storm Veteran in that case. But that won't mean he won't end up nice and colorful still. And lastly is the wood. Not all of the rats have wooden elements to them, so I don't have to use this that often in the force overall, but the back of the guns I've chosen for the Storm Ogre are barrel-like, so it's going to get used this time around. Therefore, to include it on the worm blood, I'm just going to make the stock of his weapon wood as well. As for where I have to deviate, that's where things get a little interesting. Rats have fur and skin. Dragons have scales. So obviously there's a mismatch happening there that I'm going to have to solve creatively. For the rats, I've been making them albino furred and pink skin-like skin. The beefed out storm ogre doesn't really have too much fur showing this time around though. So luckily, I won't be painting a whole lot of my fur textures. And while I could do an albino or white scale for the dragon, with his already desaturated armor, I think that would just be too much white for one model. But what this worm blood doesn't have is a cloak or cape, which means I've got nowhere for my red to go. Children of the Walking Flame, and there's no place for the red in my scheme, well, it seems like a whole lot of sense then to make him a red dragon. He'll fit into the scheme, but because red will be part of his natural color, I think it'll also help him stand out as well. Yellow is also a big part of my rat's scheme, though for the most part, because they use lots of natural colors like leather and metal, I've kind of relegated it to the edges of things. So nothing fully yellow, but just some accents here or there around the more natural colors. Unfortunately for my dragon here, he doesn't have much in the way of separate edges. However, he does have some uniquely shaped plates on his metal armor. And well, you know what else we use yellow for? Non-metal metal gold. So instead of trying to shoehorn in some mustard to go with his ketchup, instead I'll dial up the contrast and just make some gold to go with his silver. In the grand scheme of things, there's nothing my new dragon friend here can't do that couldn't have been done in the same list with something like a normal rat ogre, just without the wings. But that's kind of the beauty of the rule set and allies. They're a chance to branch out and be creative in both personal lore and army diversity. Just seeing scales and wings among my rats will make them stand out among other rat armies. 3D printing has become almost overwhelming with the choice and variety of models and STLs out there now, and every month there's more being added to the pile. If you're like me, you always get eager to paint something, but might not have enough reason to do a full force. By adding allies and painting them to fit among your current forces, it gives motive and opportunity to paint something you really want to, while also giving them a place to fit in. 
So I encourage everyone to branch out and find friends for your forces in the most unlikely of places. You can find links to both One Page Rules and Dragon Trapper's Lodge down in the description. I'd also like to take the opportunity to announce that I've started my own Patreon. Right now I have two long form paint along videos that anyone can watch for free as an example of one of the perks backers will be getting. Each month I'll be doing Q&A streams, polls, ad free videos, and exclusive paint along videos with a model everyone can access for free from other Patreons or hopefully with enough support, exclusive STLs. So I'll leave a link in the description for everyone to check out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like this video and check the link in the description to my discord where I talk all sorts of nonsense about miniatures painting, provide critique on paint jobs, and occasionally stream.